Welcome to episode one of Purple Kush in DWC. I grew this monster my second time growing in DWC from seed. Was it beginner's luck? Well, yeah, but in today's video, I've got a few tips and I'm gonna show you everything I did to get to this point. Lock in. So let me start off by saying I'm no expert. I did this grow for science and education. It all starts with a clean environment. I'm growing in a brand new 4x4 tent thoroughly disinfected and sterilized. Lighting is just as important. I'm running two Mars Hydro TSW 2000s for that full wall-to-wall -wall coverage. For the system, I'm using the Root Spa DWC bucket system. And here's the winning secret. It comes with a beast of an air pump. More oxygen means bigger roots and faster growth. I'm using plain old hydrogen as the grow medium. And before using it, I made sure it was thoroughly disinfected. Don't even think about using regular water for DWC. I've got a water distiller to make sure the water is pure. Stick to water-soluble nutrients. These will break down quick and are rapidly absorbed by the plants. And don't slack on your feeding schedule. I worked with ChatGPT to design mine. This really helped me dial it in. Another tip is to pre-mix your nutrients. It makes weekly feedings a breeze and saves time and money because you're not wasting nutrients. For this grow, I'm running Royal Purple Kush by Emerald Triangle Seeds. Purple Kush is a classic. It's a compact, strong growing indica, perfect for an indoor mother plant. But if you want to unlock its full potential, you've got to start right from day one. I always start by soaking the seeds in room temperature water. This softens the shell and kickstarts the taproot development. As soon as the taproot appears, I move it into a rock wool cube, then put it under a humidity dome until it sprouts. In the first two weeks, my goal is root development, not rapid top growth. A lot of growers rush this stage, but strong roots now means explosive growth later. I'm running the light intensity at 50%, keeping the water temperature between 65 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit and nutrients at a low strength. A stable environment and light nutrients allows the plant to focus entirely on root growth. Day 14, the first two weeks were smooth sailing. I was worried that the seedlings would dry out, but that didn't happen. The rock wool cubes provided just enough moisture until the roots were long enough to reach the water. Then around day 18, the roots exploded. To make sure they stayed healthy, I used Revitalize. It's a fungicide and root inoculant packed with beneficial bacteria. It works like HydroGuard, but it's 1,000 times more potent. I'm not exaggerating. On the label, it has the same active ingredient as HydroGuard, but in a much higher concentration. Just a few drops is all I need early on. And it keeps the roots thriving. Day 20. Now I don't know about y'all, but to me, DWC is about as exciting as watching grass grow. It's missing some action compared to other growth systems when you don't have to worry about bugs or pests or clogged equipment. You just need to keep an eye on the water level. When everything is dialed in, the system just works. And it's pretty much hands off, except when it's time for feedings. Feedings were a pain at first, but then I started pre-mixing my nutrients and it got a little easier. The key is to stay in range on the EC and PPMs and follow the feeding schedule. Start low so the plant can keep growing without hitting speed bumps and slowly crank it up each week. 
and pay close attention to your plants for signs of deficiencies or overfeeding. Day 29, we're working on our seventh node. So today I decided to top the plant. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't do this sooner. Well, you know, topping is considered high stress training. And honestly, I'm not a fan of stressing my plants when they're young. I wait until they're mature. And plus, this is a mother plant. Now that I've waited, I can get a few decent sized clones. The best clones come from the lower part of the plant. They root much faster than the top ones. I didn't get many, but I cleared out the bottom to improve airflow and light penetration. At this point, the plant isn't just growing, it's establishing its long-term form. You know what they say, roots don't lie. If they're white, dense, and filling the bucket, the plant is thriving. If they're thin or covered in brown slime, then you've got a problem. That's why DWC growers stress oxygen levels. The roots love oxygen. And thankfully, the eight outlet air pump in my system keeps the oxygen pumping. Day 31. Topping really paid off. Now, instead of one top, I've got multiple, and the canopy is filling in evenly. Every time you top, you're forcing the plant to redirect energy, which builds a stronger, more balanced structure. A well-structured plant like this is built for heavy cloning and eventually a massive yield. Day 36, at this stage, it's all about keeping the plant healthy. Consistent feeding, light pruning, and some targeted defoliation. Since this is a mother plant, I took another round of clones. A strong mother can produce healthy cuttings consistently without slowing down. Day 40, now we're in full production mode. The plant is thriving. New growth stacked on top of new growth. Exactly what you want in a mother. <laughs> Day 43, at this stage, it's all about maintaining the cycle. Regular feedings, occasional pruning, and keeping the environment steady. The structure is set and the plant's in a rhythm of consistent growth. We're cruising through veg now, and we're putting on some serious size. The branches are filling out, getting thicker and stronger with plenty of space between the nodes. This is exactly what you want from a mother plant. Day 61. Man, have you ever seen a plant like this? Be honest, I've grown big plants before, but this one takes the crown. These branches are solid with no signs of weakness. They're ready for whatever comes their way. And the trunk is massive. I mean, it's thicker than a snicker, literally. I gave her one last defoliation, opened her up for more airflow and let the light do its magic all the way down to the lower leaves. So I didn't do everything perfect but I followed a few key guidelines and ended up with a monster. Now I can take clones for a long time, and when I'm done, I'll have a huge plant to flower, and you're coming along for the ride. Thanks for watching. If you're feeling the series, drop a like and subscribe, because the next episode is coming up right after this.